Hey Luke here with CatsAndCarp.com and I'm going to show you how to catch some catfish. We're having a great time here with my two boys and my sister and we're catching some beautiful fish. We're going to show you how we're doing it and what we're doing to catch these fish. Anytime I go catfishing, the first thing I do is get bait. Now in this situation I'm using bluegill and I'm just using a little bit of worm, a number 14 hook and a bobber and I'm catching these little bluegill handover fish, which is what you need to do because I've got about 45 minutes to catch all the bait I need and I generally need about 12 to 15 bluegill. On hot summer days like this I like using bluegill rather than shad because bluegill just survive so much better in this hot weather. The shad just die in your live well all the time. A lot of people have been asking me about my boat. This boat is made by Apex Marine. It's called the Gilgetter Fishing Cruise. It's a seven foot by 13 foot mini pontoon. Absolutely fabulous boat. I've got a small Kia Sportage. I don't own a pickup truck or anything, and I can tow this thing easy. And uh, it's just really manageable, and it's indestructible, and it's a great fishing platform. But it's also a great family boat. It's comfortable and has all the luxury of a pontoon boat. And it's just so much easier to take my small children fishing because the rails keep them penned in. And the boat's high enough off the water that they don't want to like constantly reach in to try to touch the water. So I can take my one-year-old my three-year-old on this boat and they really just stay out of trouble a lot more than if I was on the bank or in a smaller boat. I got this thing decked out for fishing too. I've got the 899 side imaging sonar by Hummingbird. I've got the monster rod holders around the rail. And you can see here I'm fishing with six rods and I'm fishing with live bait. Live bait is the best bait if you're going to target all three species of catfish. Flatheads love live bait more than anything else and blue catfish and channel catfish love it too. So you really got a shot at catching flatheads, blues, or channel cats. The rods I'm using are the seven foot medium heavy action whisker seeker rods with the Okuma Trios 55S reels. I've got 40 pound braid. It's a really good setup for catching catfish up to an exceeding 40 pounds. It also plays well with smaller channel catfish. Now let me show you the rig I'm using. I've got these HD sinker sliders from bottomdwellertackle.com. They're beefier than the eagle claws and so I really like these. I got these at the catfish conference last year and I've just really digged them. I put a bead in between the slider and the swivel to keep the swivel from jamming up inside the slider and uh, you can get those at any tackle shop. Then I attach an oversized swivel using a polymer knot. Polymer knots are super easy to tie, they're strong, and you rarely screw them up because they're so simple. A polymer knot is one of those basic knots that every fisherman should learn how to tie, and part of its beauty is its simplicity. You, it's hard to screw up because it's so simple. It makes it really strong. So I have this rig wallet I use to keep all my pre-tied hooks. Um, I snell my hooks using a knotless knot, and I've got a video in the description on how to snell a hook with a knotless knot. Very simple. Each leader has a loop on the end, and I feed the loop through the swivel eye, and then I feed the hook through the loop. This is called a cow hitch knot, and it's very simple. It's a great way to attach a leader to a swivel. Then I have these three ounce disc sinkers that I attach onto the sinker slider, and I'm good to go. And that's my rig. I have a lot of people ask me what kind of hook to use. And if you're going to be fishing with your rod and rod holder, there's one hook you want to use, and that's the circle hook. With circle hooks, you don't set the hook. They're self-setting hooks. This means that the fish swimming away with the bait in their mouth sets the hook themselves. You do not want to set the hook when you're fishing with circle hooks. And I'm going to explain why. So this uh, little paper cup here is going to represent the mouth of a catfish. And here I've got uh, what I think is an eight-aught circle hook. So catfish comes along and he s swallows the hook. If you go and set the hook, it's just going to come out every time. So what happens is the fish grabs the hook and starts to swim away and that hook gets led out to the corner of the mouth and then the pressure of the fish swimming away goes boink and sticks that hook right in the corner of the mouth. Now what causes that force to to set the hook is the resistance of your rod, okay, and the weight of the lead on your line. So what you use is the bigger the circle hook you have, the more force it takes to shove that into a fish's mouth. 
So the bigger the hook you're using, the more lead you want to use so that there's more resistance pulling on that as the fish swims away. You get a better hook set. Additionally, I like to fish with my drag set cranked way down when my rods are in the rod holder. That way when that fish is swims away and that line tightens up, boom, there's a lot of force jamming that hook and setting that point deep. Because of the design of circle hooks, they tend not to set inside the fish's mouth, which keeps them from being gut hooked or deep hooked. Instead, the hook just tends to find purchase only as it's leaving the fish's mouth. This makes it so that the, the hook is in the corner of the mouth or the, in the lips instead of deep down in the throat. So if you're catch and release fishing, this is a lot better uh, method. Additionally, because the hook has to twist in and twist out, it's harder for the fish to shake the hook simply by rolling around and shaking. So you tend to lose fewer fish with the circle hook. For all these reasons, I love circle hooks whenever I'm not holding the rods in my hand. See Nathan, got these rods here. Yeah, see the fish are on the end, and the fish are swimming on the bottom, and the catfish come along and go, home. Oh. I grab them, and then we reel in the catfish. Oh. Yeah. Right here. Oh, look at that. That's a proper hit. Oh, nice blue. Oh, the blues are out thick, baby. Yeah, it's a blue. Oh, it's so good. Woo. Nope, it's a blue catfish. Sit on up on the bench. If you're filming the fish you're catching, it's easy to hurt them accidentally. By the time you land a fish, it's exhausted and its oxygen's been depleted. So holding it out of the water after all that fuss is really traumatic. So what you do is you take a keep net, which is basically a big mesh bag, and you put the fish in there and let it catch its breath for a few minutes, and then pull it out and take all your photos before letting it go. It's much less likely to damage the fish than a stringer, and it's a great trick if you're going to do more than just take a quick snapshot. All right, Nathan. Nathan, come here, buddy. See that noise that catfish is making? Um, it's There's a shoulder blade like bone here attached to their pectal fin, and they rub it, and it makes that noise. And this catfish is actually unusual because he's ambidextrous. Most catfish are left-handed or right-handed, and they make that noise with either their left fin or their right fin. This catfish is using both fins. He's an ambidextrous catfish. A lot of people are nervous about catfish and how, getting stung by a catfish. The pectal fin ends and the dorsal fin of a catfish have a spine in it, but the older the catfish gets, the duller the spine gets. This is an older catfish, and his spines are as dull as the cap on a ballpoint pen. It would, you'd have to really work hard to get stabbed by it. It's the little ones you gotta be worried about. Little tiny catfish are like baby fingernails. I mean, they're so sharp, they'll just, they'll jack you up. So, but on nice fish like this, no problems. So the safety message here is catch big catfish. Don't do it just for fun, do it for safety. I go catfishing a lot, and it's not uncommon for me to catch 100 pounds of catfish in a week. If I wasn't doing catch and release, it would be catastrophic to my favorite fishing spots. I want to make sure that my, my sons and my neighbors have an opportunity to catch these awesome fish too. So I try to release the big catfish, and if I'm in the mood for a po' boy sandwich, I'll take a little guy home with me. Bumblebees, bumblebees under the barn. Sting little Nathan right out of the arrow. <laughs> Oh, you want more bumblebees? Bumblebee, bumblebee under the barn. Sting little Nathan right under the <laughs> When boats go by, sometimes it, I don't know, it triggers the catfish bite. Especially on really big rivers where there's a lot of boat traffic. There's a lot of theories about this, but I'm not the only one who's noticed this. A lot of people think it's because the big boats tend to chop up shad in their props. 
And so it gets the catfish excited like a dinner bell and they start feeding more aggressively, kind of a Pavlovian response. When you're fishing with live bait, some of your bait's just going to die. This one got hit twice by a catfish and uh, he didn't make it. So since he's dead, I'm going to cut him in half. When I'm using dead bait, I prefer to use half a bluegill because the smaller pieces fit into the catfish's mouth easier and that gives me a higher hookup percentage. So I just lose fewer fish using cut, fit, cut bait. The downside is that the flatheads don't seem to care as much for the cut bait. Um, I rarely, if ever, catch flatheads on dead bait. But when you're cutting it up, I just cut it in half, cut the tail off the, the end piece, and then I hook the head just behind the eyes through the back, and I hook the tail section through the back as well. Works good. In my videos you'll see me fishing with bells and I don't need a bell to tell me when there's a fish on the line but I do need a bell to let me know when I'm getting bites because I can't pay attention to my rod 100% of the time. When a fish hits your line and doesn't hook up you should wait about three to four minutes and if you don't get any more nibbles you need to pull it in and check your bait. If you don't do this you're going to end up fishing with bare hooks. Reel it, come and get it, buddy. Reel it, start reeling. Start reeling, Tommy. Start reeling, reel, reel. You want to reel it? Go for it. He's very big. He's very big? Well, good. Yeah, yo, he's on there, all right. Keep reeling, Tommy. You got him. Yeah, keep reeling. You got him. Ooh. Yeah, that's a decent fish. Keep reeling, Tommy. Reel. Yeah. Like this, like this. Go like that. Now push it forward like this. Go oh. forward like that. Okay, yeah. oh, see yeah. it? Go yeah. for it. Yeah. You got it. You're reeling. Yeah, there you go, Tommy. You're reeling him in. Your polar boy strength. All right. All right, Tommy, he's in. Yeah. Look at that. That's a nice channel kill. Yeah, he's my friend. These are. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of I've had people ask me about unhooking a catfish. When you got these circle hooks, you got to twist the hook out. You can't just pull it back out. You got to kind of twist, and then you shake it and it comes out. You don't have to pull it hard, but just shake it and it comes out. Here, sit on my lap. You got it? Yeah, here, hold it. Put your arms under his, his body. Yeah, you want that, Nate? Yeah. Yeah, look at that. I got this, I caught this tail cat. Did you do it all by yourself? Yeah, I did. Oh, great. Oh, you, you want to hold him too? You want to hold them too, Nathan? <laughs> you want to put them back? Okay, hold them and turn around so Aunt Melanie can see. Like this, like this. Okay, go for it. And splash! Good job! I mentioned earlier checking your bait, and here's a prime example of why you do that. I got a big hit, nothing hooked up, reeled it in, and the hook points buried itself back inside the fish. Would have never realized the problem if I didn't know I was missing hits. It is time for your bedtime. 
Your mama must be out of town if you're up this late. Well, hopefully you liked this video and you learned a few tips and tricks to catching more catfish. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I try to answer all the questions. And if you like this video, check out some of our playlists, including our How to Catch Catfish playlist with all of my videos on how to catch catfish and my catfish bait playlist, which all my favorite videos about my favorite catfish baits. If you like what you see, don't forget to click subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.